Hello Audacious Church, my name is Jen Weaver and I represent North Location. What a crazy year I've just experienced. Lockdowns, no travel, shops closed, no sport, no gyms, no hairdressers. The strange thing for us was that all the batteries in, in our watches died so we didn't have a watch between us. So Paul had to wear his golf watch and I had to use my Fitbit. However, I did notice that in all of it, none of it seemed to phase God at all. It is great to serve a God who is not taken by surprise and with whom we can always be in dialogue. I have noticed in the Bible that when God calls people, he often comes straight into their ordinary day. There are times when God speaks to us directly through the preached word and our response is, is wanted and immediate. I can remember such occasions in my life. But often God speaks to us straight into our ordinary day. When Jesus was calling his disciples, Matthew 4.18 says, while Jesus was walking along the shore of Galilee, he saw two brothers. One was Simon, also known as Peter, and the other was Andrew. They were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, come with me. I will teach you how to bring in people instead of fish. Did they understand when Jesus said, I will tell you how to bring in people instead of fish? I don't know, but they followed Jesus. And then Saul of Tarsus, he was called on one of his ordinary days when he was going to persecute Christians. Can you believe that that was somebody's ordinary day? And then there was Mary, a young girl in her mid-teens. On her ordinary day, an angel suddenly arrives and tells her that she's going to be the mother Jesus Christ it started for her on an ordinary day, but it began anything but an ordinary journey. And then there was Moses. Moses was in the desert when he saw something that interested him. A bush was burning, but it wasn't being burned up, or the Bible says consumed. And Moses approached the bush looking at it, and God called him by name out of the bush and told him to take his sandals off because he was on holy ground. I observe from that that God knows our names. Isn't it good to have a God who knows us personally? And he speaks to us, and when he speaks to us, it becomes holy ground. For me, it was in a meeting where the preached word of God was so powerful that my response meant that I was on my knees at the front because I knew I was on holy ground and I knew God was talking to me. Another time when God spoke to me, I was on a train. The train had broken down, actually. It was cold and dark because there was no electricity. But in the middle of all that, God spoke to me. And I knew it was holy ground. And my response would affect the whole of my life. In Moses' case, he showed willingness to listen. God said, I'm sending you to lead my people out of this country that was Egypt. That was a shock for Moses. You know, on paper, he was an unlikely leader. Unlikely to do this job. First thing was he was a refugee. He didn't even belong. He didn't belong in Egypt and at this point he was living in Midian. And he'd run from Egypt to Midian. He should have been killed at birth according to the ruling Pharaoh. But the Pharaoh's daughter had taken him and brought him up in the palace. He'd been taught a different language, religion and culture to his people. And then we see that Moses was a murderer. 
And that showed me that stuff from our past doesn't exclude us from God's plans for our future. That is amazing. God doesn't give up on us, on our journey, whatever we've done. And God had been planning for this murderer since his birth. God valued Moses. But then we notice that actually at this moment he was on the run because he had murdered this Egyptian who was beating an Israelite. He escaped from Egypt to Midian because he was frightened somebody might kill him. He was a shepherd. He had a very lowly job. The pay was poor and the conditions were awful. He was working in a desert trying to find pasture and water for sheep. I've been in those deserts in the Middle East and there's not much pasture that you could give sheep and you don't see much water either. He had low self-esteem. He argued with God that he just couldn't do it. And God more or less made a case out to him that his people needed him. But Moses was still trying to get out of it. So Moses' next thing was, he told God he couldn't speak. He had had a strange upbringing. An Israelite boy raised in an Egyptian palace by Pharaoh's daughter, while his own people were enslaved outside the palace all around him. His Egyptian education didn't really match the job that God was calling him to do, to negotiate freedom for the Israelite slave nation. And then the next thing was, he said, he had a stammer and he definitely had no confidence. Once when I was still at work, I started a new job. And as part of the induction to the job, I had to walk the back alleys of a very deprived area in the place where we lived. The green areas were all overgrown. There was stuff people had dumped. There was an old settee, an old bike, some old clothes, needles, syringes and condoms. It was not very nice at all. In fact, it was awful. But right in the middle of all this uh, squalor, I saw a flower. It had managed to raise its head up above everything around it. And it was a beautiful yellow flower. It looked at me and it said, there is hope. Things can change. It doesn't have to stay like this. Poor Moses, in the middle of his mess, refugee, murderer, low paid job, low self-esteem, he couldn't speak. God still wanted him to begin the change for his people. So if you've got your list of reasons why God can't use you, and why you can't do what you're being asked to do, the answer is, you can. God armed Moses with an amazing bunch of miracles to persuade the Pharaoh that it was time for the Israelites to leave. But Moses was still saying, please God, send someone else. God said, Okay, Moses, here comes your brother Aaron. He can speak. I will be with you both as you speak. And I will tell you what to do. Now, take this walking stick and use it to perform miracles. So audacious church, is God calling you to do something on an ordinary day? And you feel you're too ordinary to do this thing God is asking you to do. For me, it was in the train, in the cold and dark, I had to decide to move 300 miles geographically. That wasn't my plan. For you, it could be a host of simpler things, 
or it could be bigger things. Whatever it is, you just have to take one step at a time. But you have to move. God will lay the path before you and you will know his leading in what he is calling you to do. We must not become reservoirs when what's needed is a river. And don't be a blockage when someone needs a bridge. What about Moses? Well, I suppose we could say the rest is history. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you because you hear us. I thank you because you know us by name. I thank you because you love us and have plans for us. And I pray that if you are speaking to somebody today about what you want them to do, you will help them to take the first step forward and then enable them to do what you're calling them to do. I thank you, God, that you take us right through everything that is your will for us to do and you help us succeed. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for taking us as far as you have taken us. And please continue to lead us as we serve you. Amen.